Why do you think others don't believe in God? And do you think atheism will continue to rise in support? And this is from, uh, again, forgive me if I say this wrong, Gerti uh, Cleopas. Um, so I mentioned before that there's two completely different words, God and the creator, right? And um, it's funny, but I mentioned before Selena so on that when as soon as I mentioned things, you could right away, you know, throw the whole conversation out if you don't agree with that one thing. But it, I'll, I'll, I'll throw another because it was a conversation that, so, that I saw someone sent me this clip with a similar question. It was like, uh, Ricky Gervais or something like that. He was with the interview and, 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 and he yeah, himself, okay. Okay. he's like, he's like, there are 3,000 gods, 30,000 gods out there and you only believe in three of them. He says, I believe in three less than you. Make sense? You heard that here's the thing? It was a, it was a yeah, no, because he's a he's a very outspoken atheist. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. What he, I, I, either way, for all I know, this guy could be arrested <laughs> for every crime, moral crime. I don't know. I don't know him from Adam. So please, I I, I should not use names of people that I don't know. But uh, that I, this was a clip that it was so brilliant, like the way it was worded. And and uh, the problem is that it's completely, completely ignorant and, and, and the opposite of, of of the reality. And 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 the reason is like this: God is not the synonymous with the creator. God simply means the highest level of authority. When people say God tells people to kill, God makes wars, it's totally true. What do we mean? To kill is the, the most extreme thing we could think of morally, like reprehensible. And the pinnacle of morality, wherever that is for you, let's call that God. Okay. So let's say he was saying there's 3,000 gods out there, right? And I, you know, I actually meant to research this once and I never really did, but I heard someone told me, and I it was came on authority. I, I don't really have too much faith in anything that happened more than 50 years ago. This happened about a few hundred years ago. But there, there is a very accepted a historical fact that in Peru, and they were or South America somewhere, they were they were inaugurating a temple, and they they made 80,000 human sacrifices. Wow. Okay, that is one of those 3,000 gods that they believed in, and he asked them to make sacrifices. The 80,000 human sacrifices to inaugurate a temple not very far from where we live. We can drive there. And it wasn't that all that long ago. Not talking about the ancient history, talking about a few hundred years ago. Um, and that sounds horrible. Um, and, and then you think of the different wars. I mean, the Christians have burned Jews alive. And, and then you think about even recently, there were some you know, very, very uh, fundamental people in the name of Islam that went and, and, and could murder Americans and, and do terrorism. And, and you think of these things, you okay, gods are, are, are causing war, and atheism is taking away the god. That's not true. Because God is simply the pinnacle of our belief. So if this person believes in 3,000 gods, a god of rain, and a god of sun, a god of... So at least he believes that he has to act properly for rain to come. He has to act properly for sun. He had, there's some people he's going to kill, some people he can't kill. Get rid of that god. You haven't gotten rid of it. It's like this, this chef, he, he said, all the top bowls in the restaurant are dusty. So let's, he has piles of bowls. The top one's getting dusty. Let's take off a top bowl. That doesn't help. Now you have more bowls that are dusty. If you take all of them flat and you say there's no top bowl, all the bowls will be dusty. But taking, saying, I don't believe in God is not saying I don't believe in something higher than me. You're saying there's nothing higher than me. So if you go back very recently, to three gods. I don't want to say his name, but start with Adolf and ends with Hitler. <laughs> Joseph Stalin yeah. and Chairman Mao. I call them gods because there was nothing higher than them. Yeah. They believed they, they were believed the state. Yeah. So, so by my de by, by the by the simple logical definition of what a god is, they killed over a hundred million people in the, in the matter of the same thing like with the Uyghur, gen Uyghur genocide ongoing right now in China. No, but but going but but going farther than that. No, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like what what did the uh, war era? Yeah, sorry? What did Louis the Sun King say? Oh, sorry. So, one second. So so now, by the way, that's that, that's not entirely. That's it doesn't you don't have to go that far because right this year, in the United States, there is a Holocaust of godless murder. There is a holo there, there are tens of thousands of people being murdered every year by people who are God. Meaning, not every atheist, obviously, is, God forbid, going to be a murderer, or is going to be a bad person, not at all. 
But every person that kills somebody else, by definition, by the way that I'm defining it, in other words, is an atheist. They don't have a God telling them not to kill. And so there are many gods this year that said, my girlfriend can't be with somebody else. And if she is, I'm going to take my kids into the car. And I'm going to drive off a bridge and we'll all be dead. And these are not even newsworthy anymore. These stories, people burning down their house with their own kid. So the, the belief that there is, so God is something that is, oh, tells me not to kill. Now, unfortunately, idolatry will tell me, is, idolatry is the, is, the, is the faith in a God that is divided, is measurable, and therefore people outside that measurement will be killed. So the pagan 80,000 sacrifices is a holocaust. The, going back, you know, like we said before, those the, 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 the generation before us, a couple generations before us, that was a hol multiple holocaust. The, but and then, but if you go, if you go back, there were Christian wars, there were Muslim wars, because there is a certain aspect of idolatry. When our view of God, when we say there's one God, and we mean my God, not your God, that's idolatry. My God, not your God, that's idolatry. What do we mean when we say one God? What we mean is, remember before I said if we didn't exist, would we be nothing, everything. would be everything. Yeah. The real <laughs> belief is that there is a true oneness and that division is not real. Division is brought by the Creator to allow us the ability to re-bring back that unity. So if we could get rid of... So atheism is the belief that nothing unites me. And that is the most tempting and intuitive perspective that we can have. It is contradicted by every moral value and by every life-validating uh, experience. So anybody that, that, that gets married, anybody that has a friend, anybody that helps somebody that's sick, anybody that, that has ever helped somebody will see the fallacy of that extreme concept of what I would like to call atheism. And then there is a, a pinnacle. Do I think atheism is, so why do I believe that, that people do not believe in God? I think the reason is because it's God's fault. God created us, very specific. We're so, we're so unique that we can, that we physically exist, but we also, God also made not just our physical bodies, not time and space that they, they define us, but also our desires, also our, our, our you know, my, my, my jokes are mine and not yours. My beliefs are mine and not yours. So it's very, very humbling to go past that, to break out of that and say, you know, here's a piece of cake. I wanted to eat it, but you're more hungry. Here's my time. I need my time, but you need it more than me. Here's my smile. It's very humbling to do that. Um, but, 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 but God did make a world that, that is, it, it pushes in that direction. The truth, so it, it, the truth will, will constantly reveal that breaking our barriers, breaking past ourselves will always be better, be healthier, be happier, will be more meaningful. Societies will build together. They'll fall apart. All these societies fell apart when they were built on them, on those, on themselves. Uh -huh. And like, so, like, like, given that, like, 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 I understand that, the, like, the general answer might be God has made um, speci specificity within people. Um, however, right. like, I genuinely think there are, like, two, two concerns within that, like, statement. Um, yeah. One being, like, that's, like, a super, super general um, term. And, like, although that may be true, um it wouldn't really answer anything now because like, like, okay, he created us in that way. Like what to do now? And like, why do you think that there's been a rise? Do you think he's suddenly been, been engineering more and more people that way? And two, um, I think to, to make that like premise that God is making everyone with specificity, you need to believe in God. So like from more of just like a spiritual philosophical point of view, um, yes, with of course your um, Jewish and um, every other piece of knowledge you have to answer it, but like more from like a holistic perspective, um, why why do you think like less and less people are believing in religion altogether, and why is atheism ri uh, rising? But like, kind of explaining it in I don't know like societal terms with like uh, an infusion of religion rather than like 
saying that God okay. made it so. So okay. I don't think that a atheism is growing at, at all. Um, I'll, I'll explain what you mean by the number, why, why, why those numbers look that way. But I feel that like all of where, you know, science, psychology, philosophy, every meme you're going to ever see on your, on your computer that you like to share, they always point to these messages that I've mentioned about, about unity and caring about others and all the different things that are, that are there for the creator. Um, there is one challenge that, um, that, that, that society has faced, and that is that um, when you have something that's subtle, when you have something that takes depth, uh, you need to get it from a, someone that you respect. So generally speaking, that's always been parenting, it's always been education. And parenting and education always went together. Either the parents would educate, or they'd bring you to a school that represented their values. Um, this country is the kindest country that has existed in the history of the world, barring, of course, you know, Israel and the King Solomon. Um, but this country has been, it is incredible in, in the freedoms and in the freedom of religion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there has, there, it, but that kind of kindness opens up to certain things. I will tell you that one of the most painful aspects in this country is that a very small, tiny minority, about 50, 60 years ago, um, utilized and, and, and corrupted the laws of this country because it definitely does not fit with the actual wording of the, of the Constitution or the words of, and to be able to take full control of education and they utilized the, the freedom for each person to have the faith of their ancestors without fear. They used that to take that away from children, to illegalize, not only illegalize the faith that their parents wanted to share, but they did not, they refused even to put a moment of silence for every kid to, believe, to think of what their parents teach them. I, I think that that gap, that tremendous gap between parent and children in education explains this counter scientific trend where the children are now, even though psychology is recognizing unity and then you see how, you know, the health of marriages and you see psychologically how people are, you know, so much less dependent on drugs and suicide and depression and all the other things that, you know, every, everything scientific is going directly, strongly towards religion. But the, the, the pattern of the children, just because the, the, you know, you have kids that are being raised and educated in a complete generation gap, all those messages that the parents learn, and even if the parent, even let's say, for example, if you guys, right? Imagine if you suddenly become wise to this concept. You, all of a sudden, I succeed. Hey, my goodness, you, you believe whatever thing I say, and you decide you want to raise your kids a certain way, you would be fined, uh, you know, a good five to $15,000 a year per kid if you wanted to raise them with these values. And that, that, that is a, and that is a tremendous, that's where, that's where the numbers in the direction of, of, of kind of atheistic uh, proclivity or, or titles that people are using are coming from. But actual, I believe that the, you know, the world is on a, a bullet train towards unity, towards, you know, seeing meaning and purpose and everything. And it's constantly there and you, you see the messages everywhere. And I think it's going to get there regardless, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that essentially sums that up. So. Yeah, like, and you like kind of see that like the environment's at play um, a lot more than like you think. Like, I had not thought about it at the perspective I used to. I mean, I still I before like you just think it's kind of like an evolutionary almost shift, but that's not the case. Um, yeah, I guess like I thought about it. The first like colonizers of America first came for the language. So just being like engrossed in that religious environment contributed to such beliefs. So without them, it seems as if the rise in atheism is cause of, causal, but it's just correlative, and correlation does not imply causation. Exactly. Yeah.